All right, so today I'm going to be working through ACT packet number two. I posted this on Canvas, and I want you to remember that these problems are not mandatory. They are not for a grade. It's just geometry questions that you might find on the ACT. Some of this stuff we haven't learned yet, and I'll just use these as teachable moments, uh, whatever you can get out of it. Um, obviously try to work the problems yourself through the first time. You can read the solutions or in the back and um, I'm just providing these videos so that uh, we can get some of the discussion and the teaching aspect of the different problems if it didn't make sense to you when you read in the solutions guide. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll do I don't know, I'll try to make each video around 10 or 12 minutes so it's not too long. So in number one we have some circles and the diagram shows internally tangent circles. What the word tangent means when we're talking about circles is that it just touches at one point. So tangent just means it a line can touch at one point or anything can touch a circle at one point and it's called tangent. Uh, where the inside passes through the center of the large circle and we want to know the area of the shaded region. So whenever I have one of these problems I take uh, and I try to put into words what I'm going to do. So I need the area of the big circle and then I'm going to subtract away the area of the little circle. And I know that the area of a circle is always using the formula pi times the radius squared. And the radius is the distance from the center to the edge. So right here in my diagram, I can see the radius of the small circle is 6. So I can go ahead and fill in the formula. The area of the little circle is pi times the radius squared. Now the big circle what we know about a radius is that um, it goes from the center to the outside. So I can also, from this little circle, I can draw another radius. And that's another 6 right there. So even though the diameter of the little circle is 12, what's important about this is that now I know the distance from Q, the center of the big circle, to the edge is 12. So I now know the radius of the big circle is 12. So I can plug that into my formula. So I'm going to take pi times 12 squared and I get 144 pi. And pi times 6 squared and I get 36 pi. And so I have to do 144 minus 36 and I get 108 pi. And the nice thing is I didn't even need to really use my calculator for that because my answers are in terms of pi. Number two, we've got some parallel lines cut by a transversal and we have some angles that are labeled here. And so I'm just going to go through and analyze one, two, and three and see which ones are true so I can make my best choice. So when I see angle A is congruent to angle D, and I'm going to mark those, I see that those are vertical angles. and with my geometry definition, I know that vertical angles are congruent. So I know number one is true. Now I'm going to look at A and E. And I'm going to try and remember my geometry definition. I see that A is in the upper left-hand corner and E is in the upper left-hand corner. Therefore, they are corresponding angles. And by definition, corresponding angles have to be congruent. So number two is true. And last but not least, I'm looking at C and F. And if I remember my geometry definitions, I know that C and F are alternate interior angles. And I also know the rule of alternate interiors is that they are congruent as well. So 1, 2, and 3 are all true. For number 3, looks like what we've got a 6-foot man is standing 20 feet from a light post, and his shadow is 10 feet. And we're looking for the height of the light post. So what I see here are two triangles. I have a big triangle and I have a little triangle made by the man and his shadow. And whenever I have um, this angle right here is the same in both triangles, 
I am going to end up with similar triangles. So what I want to do is use the rules of similar triangles to set up a proportion so that I can then find my height here. So I'm going to compare, um, let's see, I'm going to put heights on the top and I'm going to put distances on the bottom and I'm going to put the height of my man and then the distance of his shadow is a 10 right there. So I'm height and distance. And now the height on my lamppost is H. That's what's unknown. And the distance for the lamppost is going to be 30. So I need to cross multiply butterfly and do 6 times 30 and I get 180 equals 10 H. Divide by 10 and I get H equals 18. In number four, triangle ABO is reflected over the y-axis. So we got to know a couple of things. Um, what's a reflection and what is the y-axis? So I'm going to label my x and my y, and then my reflection is going to, to be a flip over the axis. So looks like... We need a perimeter of the three triangle area. So I'm going to do, just to help visualize, I'm going to get out a piece of my wax paper and I'm going to trace my triangle here. And so it's an isosceles triangle. So when I flip it over the y-axis, that's going to go there. Okay, so I'm going to put a dot there, and I'm going to just draw another triangle. And then the triangle in quadrant two. Okay, so remember your quadrants. Here's one, two, three, and four. It is reflected over the x-axis. So I'm going to take it again, and I'm, this time I'm going to flip it over the x-axis. So that's going to go down there. And I'm going to put a another dot and draw that triangle in. Okay, and then uh, the perimeter of the three triangle area. So if I'm looking at the three triangle area, looks like I have five sides that I need to add up. So I know that each one of these guys is five units but what I need to be able to find is this missing side here. And to do that, it's a right triangle, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And so I'm going to take a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's 25 plus 25 is 50 equals c squared. Square root both sides, and I am going to use simplifying radicals because I can see in my answer here I've got some uh, radicals in my answer so to simplify 50 I'm going to see that that's uh, square root of 2 times square root of 25 2 times 25 is 50 and the square root of 25 is just 5 and then the square root of 2 is a big messy decimal so I'm just going to leave that like that so each one of these guys is 5 square root of 2. So when I add up my perimeter, which is to add all sides, I'm going to go 5 plus 5, that's 10, and then I have uh, 5 radical 2, and I have 3 of those, so I'm going to write it out. But the rule of radicals is that you can add these like um, the 5 is a coefficient. So I have 5 radical 2, 5 radical 2, 5 radical 2. That's 15 radical 2s altogether. And so that's going to match choice A. Let's see, where are we? We're at about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and work page 2 here while I'm at it. So I'm looking for the radius of circle M. And... 
Let's see. I'm sure there's a formula that I can use. Yes. Okay. So I know this this way, this amount around the circle is eight units. Um, so eight units is, and then I want to know what fraction of the whole circle is eight units. So 30 degrees out of 360, well, let me reduce that. Um, I can cross out the zeros, 336, and then I can reduce that. So that's 1 12th of the circle. So if I want to know how much is the whole circle, I can go 8 times 12, and that's 96, is the circumference of the whole circle. Now, on the ACT, I would never expect you to be writing all this stuff out. You work as fast as you can. I am just writing it out to explain it to you. So if 96 is the circumference, that's where we need the circumference formula. So the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So if I know the circumference, 96 is 2 pi r, and r is what I'm looking for, I can just divide by 2 pi on both sides. And it looks like my answers here are given in uh, decimals. So I can take um, I can take my 96 and divide it by 2 pi, and I get 15.63. So um, I was being lazy, and I just divided by 6.14, but the closest answer to that is A, 15.28. Okay, number six, the area of triangle ABC is A, B, C right there. So we would want to probably take the area of ABD. So that's ABD, the big triangle, and then subtract off the area of ACD. So when we find the area of a triangle, for every triangle it's one half base times height. So ABD and the well actually I'm going to do this two different ways. So I'm going to do it the way I said first. So ABD, one half, the base is 5 and 7 together, and the height is 12. So half of 12 is 6 times 12 is 72. And then ACD, that's one half, and then the base of that one is 5, and then the height is 12. So uh, one half times 5 times 12 is 30. So 72 minus 30 is 42. And that's choice A. And when I check the answer key, A is the correct answer. Um, however, the height of a triangle is the, is the distance you get when you drop a perpendicular. So this 12 is actually the height of ABC. So if I do 1 half times the base, which is 7, times 12, that gives me half of 12 is 6, 6 times 7 is 42. So I didn't need to go through all this extra work. I just used this height, this base, and I'm good to go. So A is the answer. Number seven, the diagram represents a fenced-in grazing pasture. Each north-south and east-west post is set 10 feet apart, and the diagonal posts are northwest by southeast. So what's the perimeter of the fence? Basically, guys, you have got to be able to find how long is this diagonal um, because these are 10. They're all 10. So if I add up all the 10s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12
plus 2 of however long the diagonal is. And so we talked earlier, uh, maybe in our last, about a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So I'm going to take this right triangle right here, and I'm just going to sketch it right here. So if I've got a 10 and a 10, uh, the rules of 45, 45, 90 tell me that's going to be a 10 radical 2 because of the rules. I can go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem to find my missing side. So 10 squared is 100, and 100 plus 100 is 200. And when I take a square root of that, I get square root of 100 times square root of 2. Square root of 100 is 10, 10 radical 2. Okay, so I've got my diagonals are 10 radical 2, and I have two of them. So my final answer is going to be 120 plus 20 radical 2, and that's going to be choice D right there. And number 8, I've got triangle ABC. The length of the median AM is um, what is unknown in this problem, and what I need to be able to know is that a median is a uh, line that's drawn from one vertex of a triangle to the midpoint. So this point M right here, it is labeled M, is the midpoint of BC. And if I can find out the coordinates of this point, then I can use the distance formula to find out how long this is. So remember, we have a midpoint formula, and that is, it goes like this, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So I'm going to go 2 plus 8 divided by 2, and then 4 plus 2. So that's 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So this point here is 5, 4. And now I'm looking at the distance, how far is from A to M. So my distance formula, I'm going to write it out x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So I'm going to go 5 minus 4 and 4 minus 10. So 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 squared, and then 4 minus 10 is negative 6, negative 6 squared is 36. So that's square root of 37, and is that one of my choices? No, that is not one of my choices. So what did I do wrong? Let me check my answer key. Two plus eight divided by two is five. Oh, that's what it is. Four plus two divided by two. That's six divided by two is three, not four. Okay, so I need to go ten minus or three minus ten. All right, so that's going to put me back on track. Three minus ten is seven. Negative seven and negative seven squared is forty-nine. So now 1 squared plus 49 is square root of 50, and that's not one of my choices, but if I do a factor tree, I get 2 times 25, and the square root of 25 is 5, radical 2. So that's why B is my correct answer. All right, that's uh, 1 through 8, and thanks for watching.